trash, we, we install trash screens and they can automatically open mechanically and close at different times, that kind of thing. Um, but, you know, they're not going to catch the poison yet, right? Mm -hmm. So when we, you see all the trash run down to the rivers, like that next picture, and end up on the beaches like that, those things you can see, but the poisons you don't always see. And that's why there's a lot of education aspects that go into teaching people to don't dump your oil down the drains or your pesticides down the drains. But if it happens, and it does, um, we also have ways that we can uh, capture the, the water. So between that top right picture and before it gets to the, the rivers to take it out to the ocean, we often will install various different pieces of infrastructure that will settle down the water and treat it. We treat it chemically, we treat it mechanically. Um, we treat it in a number of different ways so that we can either put it back into the river and it goes to the ocean so that you have a nicer, cleaner beach to clean up. Um, or sometimes we will divert it into the sewers, and the sewers actually are going to pick up the waste from your restroom, right? And uh, put that poisoned water in there so they can all be treated in one spot together. And a lot of times now we're working more and more to recycle that water. So as much as gross as it might sound to say toilet water could end up at your tap, we're making that dream come true. <laughs> I know, that's exciting. That is exciting. Toilet to tap does not sound exciting, but it is. Well, as part of the needed infrastructure when we do go into space because yeah. where, where else are you going to harvest water from Absolutely. thin air thin atmosphere yeah yeah for sure great question here's some good pictures from our drones this one did you guys know that a lot of the parks that you play at have giant concrete structures underneath the grass We've got, to put, we've got to put those in a lot of parks, and again, it's just it's a multi-benefit. You put a park on top, and then you capture a bunch of stormwater underneath, and those giant concrete tanks, and then the gravel that you see lets it soak back down into the groundwater supply. There's another one of spreading grounds. This is our drone. We were racing it over the river here to follow the path of the water to the ocean. Is that the LA River? This one is not. I think this is a, well, it's a tributary to that, Rio Honda. Uh -huh. Oh, Rio Honda, okay. And we do all the mapping to say if a dam fails, there's going to be 20 feet of water in your house in two hours, that kind of fun stuff as well. <clears throat> Any other questions you can think of? How are you guys different than the Metropolitan Water District? Great question. The Metropolitan Water District is strictly a water supplier. Uh -huh. So they, they actually coordinate the water that comes from the Colorado River and from Northern California, and they have partner agreements with Pasadena Water and Power and all these other vendors who buy their water, and then they pipe it to your houses. So they're really, it's the potable water supply that they're dealing with, mostly. Whereas um, Public Works, we are trying to capture the flood water to the storm water, um, and then we put it back into the ground that some other agencies can pump back out and put it in pipes. So we work really, we work well together, and it's just kind of different water types. Mm -hmm. um, but Public Works has the advantage of interacting with everybody because we also deal with imported water. Um, we have our own waterworks district that supplies water. We um, we deal with recycled water. We partner with people on studies to desalinate the ocean water and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, and to find ways to do those things in a more cost-effective way so we can start using them. And again, eventually that that big ballot measure you're talking about. Um, all that revenue is going to help us create projects and infrastructure that will help LA County be self-reliant so we don't have to get water from all these other parts, which again would translate to outer space travel at some point as well. How do you do that locally without any dependence on others? Yeah. What if um, the water pressure was too harsh on the pipes? Would it like burst out immediately? Depends on the pipe, but it, but it can. So especially as the pipe ages, it's gonna get it's gonna have wear and tear, and it could you know, the walls get thinner and that kind of thing. It could burst the pipe. So the engineer that's designing those pipes has to account for the pressure that's expected in the system, or you design it with a special set of valves that reduces it. So you can have a special piece of equipment here that takes it from hundreds of psi pounds per square inch to 30 psi, and then you can actually design the rest of your system with cheaper material because it doesn't have to be as strong. If you need to supply 6,000 homes, you maybe don't have that luxury because you need that pressure to push it all the way to the end of the system. 
It looks like we're going to have to invite you back. He's in my math class. Every, every case-by-case case situation. <laughs> yeah. It's its own set of problems, so you got to consider what you're, what you're trying to achieve. Yeah, because I remember when the water main near UCLA broke, like, it flooded. Yeah, it's a big news item. Yeah, it was. And then the new polypavilion gym um, that they finally did and had to be redone. Yeah. Yeah, it captured all the water from the water main break. Yeah.